Hello, welcome again. This is our part two video uh, going through chapter 18. That's not out of 10. We're going through chapter 18 uh, of the AP Statistics Modeling Our World uh, curriculum. Um, we are talking about sampling distributions in this video. And specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at sampling distributions for proportions. Uh, so we're going to start here talking about uh, the assumptions and conditions necessary uh, in order to use this particular model. Because as it says here, most models are only useful when specific assumptions are true. So <laughs> there's a couple of like conditions that need to be true in order for us to use a particular model. In this case, in order to use a sampling distribution, which represents a normal model, we have to have a couple things be true. Okay? Um, sometimes these things are hard, often impossible to actually check, uh, so we assume them to be true, uh, but we do need to be giving evidence. So in every problem we do, we need to check whether the assumptions are reasonable uh, by checking certain conditions that provide information about the assumptions. Okay, uh, so we have a, a list of those that we're going to be check, check, checking. Now, specifically for the AP statistics test, they do have um, certain uh, amounts that need to be written. It's not simply just a, uh, a check mark, right? Like, you check that, it's good. No, we have to actually write a little bit about it. So for each of these conditions that we're going to be putting up here, um, I want to really stress to you that you need to write a sentence or two that prove that the assumption is met, okay? Um, or at least give us significant evidence that we can assume it to be met, all right? Uh, so for a sampling distribution of proportions, right, and this is key because for means it's different, for proportions, the following conditions must be met. First of all, the sample should be drawn, should be a simple random sample of the population. Okay? Um, so what that means in terms of our AP statistics land, right? Uh, somewhere in the problem set, it should there should be a state, it should be stated that uh, a random sample was taken, right? We need to see something that says like a random sample was taken. Uh, and the way that we would write that uh, in terms of what our, our problem would say is we would say it states, uh, we would say something like it states in the problem stem that a random sample was taken. And we need to write, again, in AP land, uh, for the AP test, we need to write something like that down. Uh, because the graders are looking uh, to ensure that you did more than just say random, good, right? Because uh, of some of the questions, randomness, not good. Uh, so you need to provide some evidence that you did actually check it, right? Uh, so you need to say something like this in, in sentence form. A random sample was taken. Okay, so that's the first thing. In order to use this, we need to have a random sample. Now, the second one, let's erase those, uh, is this condition called the 10% condition. And this one is a little bit strange um, and often incredibly difficult to check. Uh, but what it states is this that the sample size, n, must be no larger than 10% of the population. So if my sample size is uh, 50, then that means my population has to be, we have to be able to assume that the population is greater than 500. Okay? Um, because this can't be more than 10%. Uh, the reasoning for that uh, is a long, drawn out explanation. Uh, that I don't want to get into on this video. So for now, it, we're, I'm going to do something that I don't like to say, but it's just trust me, this has to be done. 
um, and I can provide some uh, I can provide you guys some links to the reasons why uh, for articles uh, in, in the comments uh, below okay um, but uh, for now right just if you're watching this the 10% condition has to be met uh, if the sample size is 50 the population the big population we're looking at needs to be bigger than 500 okay so we have to be the sample size has to be smaller than 10% of the population. The third and final condition that needs to be met um, is the success failure condition. And uh, if you remember back from the binomial distributions we did in the previous chapter, uh, this is exactly the same. The sample size has to be big enough so that NP, the number of successes, and NQ, the number of failures, are at least 10. So sample size times my proportion of success and sample size times my proportion of failure. Remember, Q is 1 minus P. And those numbers need to be bigger than 10. And again, we have to actually check that and show those numbers. Okay? When we're doing our assumptions and conditions, we need to actually plug those in. So again, if my N was 50 and uh, my probability was 0.6%, uh, I need to say 50 times 0.6 is greater than 10, and actually do 50 times 0.6. Uh, what is 50 times 0.6? It's, uh, let's see, 3 fifths, 150 divided by 5. Uh, what is that, 30? Right? So that's 30 is greater than 10. And then we also have to go the other way, 50 times 0.4 is greater than 10. So that says that 20 is greater than 10. And then we can kind of like check that off. Or uh, even better, rather than writing a check mark, we write a quick sentence that says um, uh, successes and failures are both greater than 10. And as long as we can say that successes and failures are both greater than 10, um, it is, uh, it's okay to say that the success-failure condition has been met. 